Hello, Taurus, and welcome to your May forecast. I'm Nicholas Ashbaugh, and this is Apollo kicking things off today for a change. Um, good to see all of you. I hope you're doing well. Just a reminder, these monthly forecasts can always be used for Sun, Rising Moon, and Venus, really any aspect of your chart. And it's going to help you navigate through over the next six to eight weeks, taking you from right now all the way to the end of May. As always, let's get started with channeled messages. I was really pleased to see some nature elements coming through. I saw a horse and a rabbit. The first one was the rabbit. So let's begin and kind of break down that symbol. So rabbits for me are super auspicious symbols. They represent fertility, speed, abundance, and also just uh, basically an undeniable movement. Now this rabbit had uh, a little bit of a message which was it needed to be fed. Uh, I went to pet it and it just started to nibble at my hand, but it hurt. I was like, this rabbit really needs to eat. Um, it's interesting then that we would see the rabbit right here on the Queen of Pentacles. So she's there basically nourishing that Ace of Pentacles, that big coin in front of her. And the rabbit there is nibbling away on the grass. Everything is basically lush and green and nourished. If you have a goal or an ambition and it's just sitting on the shelf, you haven't done anything with it, literally or figuratively, this is the month to take it off the shelf and put the nurturing energy into that endeavor. The minute it starts to get satiated and fed and ready, I just feel like it's going to gallop off on the horizon and you're going to start to see some movement. So take time, make time to feed your dream, ambition or goal. Make time to also focus on personal development. That rabbit could be you saying, let's do this. Let's get moving. Let's really focus on self-development. And, um, and then the timeline is going to start to pick up. So you may see a little bit of stagnation or you may not see immediate return on energy, but I get the feeling that when it does come through, it'll come through fast and you really want to be grounded. That's also why I have the queen here of pentacles so that you can take it one step at a time and you can keep up with the pace because things will pick up. All right. The next thing that I saw was a little baby horse. I couldn't tell if it was a special, like a smaller variety of horses or if it was just a baby horse. But what I did look at was the, the hooves and I could see little horseshoes on them. So this wild and unruly horse came through also galloping around. So I had um, you know, a little rabbit nibbling at my hand and this horse that was creating all this movement. And I thought, wow, there's a lot going on. If you can get organized, and if you can bring in this energy in a place that's focused, I feel like um, you're going to start to see a lot of successful movement because uh, I mentioned here horses are they appear in some of the most significant cards in both minor and major arcana. So in the minor arcana, we see them in all the knights, which move the energy forward. We also, of course, see it in the chariot, which is a card of control. We see it in death, which is change and transformation and the six of wands right here. There's probably a couple of other ones, but those popped off the top of my head. All of these are really significant because um, this is a chance that uh, for you basically to create um, any sort of shift or movement that you want. And especially if you've had difficulty setting something in motion before, I feel like the month ahead, that's starting to go away and it's going to be really exciting here. Rather than waiting for something to happen, be the agent of movement and change uh, and really focus on, I think one of the things that you can do is try to create some organization here. The Six of Wands comes after the competition, the chaos, the disorder of the Five of Wands where people are just kind of spinning their wheels. So you're going to bring things in order. You might be leading by example, um, but it's it's going to pay off in the long run. Make your luck. That's what this uh, horseshoe and this horse was reminding you. Then I was shown a scene of a classroom and I also got like literally the words continuing education. So long after we go to school, uh, you know, we are forever students basically we're always learning we're always evolving but specifically some of you may be deciding to go back and finish something it could be high school diploma it could be college it could be specialization some sort of training you might just want to learn something new um, i could feel a little frustration for some of you over finding the right teacher or the right place so take your time and really make sure that the mentor or the environment is good you should be able to speak up and ask questions i highlighted that here 
if you're in a place where that's sort of shushed or hushed or you're not allowed to, to rock the boat, it may not be for you. Because I felt like it's important to have an exchange and an open communication. Uh, and that last bullet is so important. You can learn at any age, um, from the time you are newborn to the time that you leave the planet. We never stop learning and expanding and growing. So this is a great month to put some energy into that. And that could be the hungry rabbit too. Like feed my intellect or feed um, my sort of like ability to expand. That little rabbit's reminding you, you, you can do that this month, okay? Three of Pentacles typically is a return on that investment too. Then I was shown crystals. It was a lot for you guys. You've got a lot of things coming through. Um, and the crystals uh, specifically were two colors. I saw rose, um, basically rose quartz. I forgot to put that. And then also garnet. And so the garnet is going to help you with the first couple of chakras, the root, the sacral uh, chakra, where you're holding your grounding and also your, your passion and your expression and the sexual energy, all of that. And then the heart is either two different colors that can be associated with it, either green or rose. Rose is a very gentle color. It's like self-love, um, kindness, forgiveness, and it's love in a high form too. So I feel like grounding, safety, expression, and love are coming through in a really important way. And this is all focusing on you creating that stability for yourself. That is going to take your Ace of Cups and set it straight in the upright position in the receptive mode so that you can receive love, abundance, and opportunity in the highest form. So without any further delay, let's focus on this month ahead. Um, just close your eyes for a moment. Put your intention towards receiving whatever messages need to come through. And uh, let's get started. All right, let's get started here with your catalyst energy here. You received the fish and we see a fish here without the larger school. So what we have is very entrepreneurial, independent, even boss type energy. There is a flexibility that is inherent to any fish because it has the ability to twist and turn, go up and down. And so part of your power this month is in your ability to step outside of the crowd, to lead the charge if you need to, and really to be as flexible and as open with where and what kind of comes through, where you want to go, I should say, and what comes through. That is really going to uh, show that you have the capacity to move with the energy of change. And definitely we have change because in the deep past, um, I see the tower. So being able to navigate change, that is also what this card is bringing forth. Let's go ahead. Let's take a look at this spread here, which is um, by and large pretty good. We see the kind of two king energies here at the center um, change. So it is kind of stepping into the forefront with this change. There's some um, lovely movement here between the two and three of wands. We have the six of pentacles here showing some balancing as well. So we'll take it one card at a time, but I like what I see overall. And if we're going to get the tower, let's get it in the deep past as well. So 
first and foremost, and as I said it, I almost had a frog in my throat, finding your voice. This is going to be the biggest opportunity and the biggest challenge. Um, so we have the King of Arrows. Arrows in this particular deck represent swords. Um, we have the Kingfisher uh, bird coming through here. And when it's reversed, this is basically saying for many of you, it may be difficult, yet also very important for you to speak up, um, to speak out even if something doesn't feel right, doesn't sound right. This isn't just in day-to-day -day conversation. This can be in a relationship if you feel like something needs to be addressed. Definitely can be in health if you're, you know, working with a doctor and they're not listening. This is where you raise your voice or change the tone or speak more concisely and clearly so that your voice is heard and understood because you have a right to speak up. And that's really what this card is reminding you. Now, the king and the queen of swords in the upright position usually are perfectly set up to communicate well. But when reversed, sometimes the timing is off a bit. So make sure that you are taking um, sort of a read of the room, taking a temperature and making sure that everybody's ready, the time is right. And this can be as simple as saying, is now a good time? Uh, is it now a good time to talk or should we reschedule for tomorrow? Um, do you have a couple of minutes? And if the person says no, listen, say that's fine. Okay, um, let me know when you are ready because this is important. So just ask and try to find that right time. And if they continue to delay, you can either push a little bit more and just say, actually, we really do need to talk because the King of Swords reverse would do that. Or sometimes people just don't want to interact and you can take that as a cue to focus on someone who is more receptive. You don't want to force the conversation if it's basically on an audience that is closed off. Okay, so there you go. You'll know when to push and when not to, but it never hurts to ask how the person's doing, if they're ready to talk, and also to set parameters of expectation for what you're trying to do with this conversation. Just say, this should be brief. I'm just looking to do this, this, and this. And then they'll take a deep breath and think, oh, okay, that's, that's manageable. Okay, so that's pretty much everything for that. This is uh, connected to the throat chakra, so some of you may also, since I felt it when I was getting ready to speak, there could be an irritation, um, seasonal allergies, um, you know, maybe just a, a cold or flu. If it's something more serious, obviously you'll work with the doctor, but I felt a little, little agitation there. Okay, we have King of Pentacles right on top of this. Lots of lone figures in this particular deck, so this is about stepping away from the group. That's a big theme this month is... Uh, Showing other people that you can do things independently, maybe showing yourself. Sometimes we need to, to step back in order to clear our, our, our mind, body, and spirit, and definitely our head space from other people's thoughts. So if you need to do that, absolutely. The wolf energy is coming through as a reminder of your instincts. Trust your instincts when it comes to what? Time, energy, and money, particularly money and investments. If it seems too expensive, don't do it. If it seems like it's going to be something where you get a return, maybe it's even just, you know, your heart and your, your, your joy, some sort of energetic return needs to take place. Trust the instincts, speak up. Again, we see a wolf howling, so it is about using your voice, even when we're not looking at, um, you know, the king of communication here, the king of swords. So there you go. The other thing uh, when we're looking at money, because we have a wolf, there could be someone in your life that cried wolf a few times. Um, they have said that they needed something when they really don't. And this is when we look at the interplay between the king of swords and the king of um, stones or pentacles. This would be someone saying, are you sure? Because you've said this before. You can actually call it out if you see it. Okay. Now, as we look at your deep past, we have a card of change and movement. And for many of you, an opportunity to reset things here, the blasted oak, which is also the tower. The good news with this showing up in the deep past position is basically that whatever needs to change, it's typically very, very clear. Something may already be going on and it feels like you can't, you know, control it or shift it. And this card is just validating that. Whether it's a relationship taking its course, a job that perhaps has ended, something in your life that you just wish you had a little bit more control over, the universe is saying, it's okay. This is something that just needs to come to pass, that needs to move in a new direction so that a firmer foundation can be established. And uh, there really is no stopping that sort of development or change. The tower can be really good, by the way. 
you could be landing into a better job, a better home, a better relationship, a better state of mind. Sometimes we have to reach that point where it feels like we're at bottom or something just um, left our life so that we have context and appreciation when something better comes in. So whatever's leaving or about to leave, divinely decreed. That's basically what I see. And as we look at the rest of the reading, we'll start to see what is on the horizon and why that change needed to happen for you. Looking here at recent past, here's our horse that I saw in my dreams, um, the Knight of Pentacles. So something new is marching forth in your life. It could be related to a job. So if you did lose something, um, it's okay. You know, a job or an opportunity, something new will come galloping in. Now, I did note that it looks smaller, but that doesn't mean it's any less powerful. So for some of you, I mean, things have to grow. It's like a plant. You have to feed it. You have to nurture it. So maybe that was a baby horse that I saw and it just needed some time to mature. Ideas are the same way. Opportunities are the same way. But sometimes small is good. Uh, you might just be looking at a place or, or an opportunity where you're going to be leaner in the approach, not try to put like the whole kitchen sink. You're going to do one thing and do it very, very well. And um, that's going to allow you to take off in a new direction. This is a, a horse that doesn't really have a rider. And I, I mentioned things seemed unruly. So one of the things that you can do is to get organized. It feels like the, the thing that can help the direction and help you get more into like chariot energy, for instance, is to really set into motion um, long term goals, not just the short term goals, but long term goals, planetary goals, thinking of things on a really big high level and reaching a little further than you normally would. Um, because I do see the pace picking up. I do see things moving in the right direction. And the more you are in um, control of those, the better that you're going to be. Knight of Pentacles will speak up and reach out for an opportunity. If you're, we'll look at this more when I go into those of you that are already working, but let's say you are in an office. This would be about saying, I really want that opportunity over there. And you communicate that in love or relationships. If you're interested, go for it. This is the time to be active, to participate, and really to move that needle forward. And now we have an interesting card here in the crowning position. So um, the Eight of Swords is typically a card that is blindfolded. And in this deck, uh, it is not, but it's basically walking into the wind or into a storm, and you have that same feeling of being blinded or not being able to focus. I, I kind of prefer this one because um, this particular individual does carry their own um, lantern. So there's a little bit of wisdom like the hermit here. But when you are going into a storm or into a foggy area, you want to ask questions, take it one step at a time, and also make sure that you're asking yourself, what am I, what am I, is this the best choice? I feel like there's something missing, something that you've missed. Let's put it that way. Research could help. Um, so explore more opportunities. Don't feel like you have to take the first path in front of you because this particular path wouldn't be necessarily the best. We wouldn't purposely go into a storm. We can see struggle as the caption on this one. We want there to be more ease on, on the path in front of you. So I think that if you do a little bit more research or if you just wait a minute or two before taking the next step, something could clear up and you would be um, much better off by taking that pause. OK, and that's the main message on that. A very unique eight of swords. Um, sometimes this can be present when you're trying to ignore something or someone is trying to kind of pull the wool over your eyes and not have you pay attention to things. Speak up. OK, uh, it's definitely worth asking if you're if you're unclear on something. Now we have the two of wands here, and this is in the near future. And this represents your ability to see something on the horizon. And normally here we have, I love this one. It's basically right in the middle, um, claiming the, the power, the vision, the energy. With the card in reverse, there could be a little bit of uncertainty about stepping up to um, that spotlight, that stage, that opportunity, and possibly even sharing your idea. We don't always see that with the two of wands. It's often a developmental card, but I feel like part of this is you want to step into this, but there's a fear of success or judgment or visibility. Don't be afraid. This is a powerful card. Typically, the two of wands accompanies either the magician or the high priestess. It definitely empowers them. Why, you may ask? Well, because when you know what you want, the universe can show you how to get it. And, or you can see more than one path after a while when you're very clear on the destination. 
things start to open up. Synchronicities reveal themselves to you, and then you're just more empowered. And in fact, as we take a look at you, you're coming through with the embodiment of that vision, the next step to this, which is the Three of Wands. So typically the Three of Wands would show a person standing at a cliff, looking out, seeing ships coming forth. Um, in this particular deck, it's interesting because they have the third wand being the, um, the bow that the person is carrying here. So we have the two wands, which just took place here. So there was the vision. Now there's the follow through and notice how the arrow is already gone. So this person has released the arrow, set it into motion. Things are starting. The conversation has started. They probably see the ships coming in. It's also a matter here of being open to bigger possibilities. I just recently read the Three of Wands reversed and talked about um, how this sometimes can mean that the timing could be better, it could be faster, it could be different in any shape or form. Like you thought it would only come from this person at this time and you may have two or three options coming in. You might have to deal with something right now. Usually there's an, uh, an eminent or immediate em energy with this. So just be prepared. Be prepared for something different than what you thought. And it could be different, comma, but better. And that's really what we're trying to manifest here. Um, when focusing on a prayer or intention, you can say all of this or greater. And um, you can say now if possible, too. So you're putting it out that you're ready to receive more. You're ready to receive it now. And tell yourself that you're OK if the universe brings in more you can handle more, all right? This is also perhaps an unnecessary delay when it comes to travel. So if you've been putting off an important trip or checking in with something, this card is really a wake up call and saying, this is the time, um, this is the place, let's get this moving, okay? Let's take a look at what's going on in the environment here. So if we take a look at the environment, we have the five of wands. I'm going to pull the traditional card here as well. And let's talk about how you can elevate the five of wands energy. In the traditional Rider Waite Smith card, you can see five people unsuccessfully pushing all of these wands against each other. It's basically a show of egos. Sometimes in a conversation, it would be people talking over one another, trying to get everyone's attention. And all that happens is it's an expenditure of energy without much of a return. There's no cooperation. There's just basically here competition and um, a lot of noise, <laughs> a lot of movement, but not a lot of progress. In the updated version, we can see an archer and we see four wands on the ground. And basically what's going on here again is someone stepping out from the crowd, very similar to this energy, kind of needing to get away from that school, needing to get away from all the noise. And in doing so, they can direct things in a better sort of position. And this card is reversed, so it is about falling out of that group or separating yourself from this energy and saying, I'm going to take the lead. And that is aligning you to Six of Wands energy, which is success. So you really are being asked to embrace leadership, embrace your voice, speak about your vision, trust your vision. And in doing so, as we now take a look at hopes, fears, and opportunities, we get a nice payoff here. First of all, the universe is saying, it might be a busy period for you here because whenever the four of swords is reversed, you may just not have a lot of time to sleep. But look at the payoff. We have the sun and the sun also came through in wealth. Um, this particular sun card was reversed, but we can see a chance for um, a newfound power, a newfound sort of birthing or regeneration energy here. Um, the main thing that you want to do in this period of time is take care of yourself. Getting out of the competitive or this sort of like you know, endless competition energy is one of the ways to do so. But if you need a break, if you need a vacation, now is the time to communicate that. Um, as we can see here, rest is essential to that beautiful butterfly transformative energy there. Lest we forget, the sun is also not only a baby card, but one that has a horse. So this is showing the ability to birth and also have rapid progress happen. Just a reminder earlier, I was talking about um, making your luck. This card is absolutely connected to that. And this is one of the other significant horse cards in that sort of collection that I had. All of them are pretty positive. Um, and this one is showing you there's nothing to fear. And it definitely is coming in in wealth for many of you, since that was also the Oracle card as I looked at the expanded forecast. So now is the time to launch. Now is the time to move forward. It is in the upright position in possibilities. So even if you're a little bit uncertain, when we look in the wealth card here, you're going to be okay. It's, it just boils down to confidence. By the way, that's also a charisma card too. So 
turn on that confidence, that charisma, and get out there, talk to people. They're going to be drawn in. That is what the sun does. It's basically the glue at the center of our solar system. So don't second guess yourself, folks. Um, finally, and most importantly here, we have a card of balance. For some of you, it might be reclaiming balance. Maybe you're establishing it for the first time as well. One of the common themes in this card is always that there will be hands outstretched asking for some more. For many of you, this means that you've done something great and people want a little more time, a little more energy, a little more advice, a little more of whatever it is that makes you amazing. You are the one holding the scales deciding, does this make sense? Is this enough? Is it too much? Um, and you're going to be discerning so you can say no to things that you don't want to do and definitely say yes to the things that matter the most. That's nicely aligned with your center card, which is about being direct. The King of Swords in reverse does not hold back, um, says exactly what needs to be said, does exactly what needs to be done. And in doing so, this is just going to make um, it, it basically establishes strength and power, you know, perception of that when other people are looking at you because they know where they stand. OK, so don't be afraid to create proper boundaries, to ask for more if you need it as well, and to say no when someone has taken too much. Uh, just from a sheer financial perspective, the Six of Pentacles is the base card that I look for when it comes to success and having enough. The reversal of this is a reminder to not overextend or try to overplease. Do what you need to do, get in, get out, and know when enough is enough. And that's basically the main piece with that. Let's expand this a little further. We'll go into health, wealth, love, and destiny. I always like to start off with health. This is a holistic look at mind, body, and spirit. And as we look at health this month, we have strength and guidance. So we can take strength. The card was reversed, by the way. We can take strength at basically face value. And some of you may just be feeling a little exhausted. Um, we talked about needing to achieve better balance. So once you set that up and maybe get better rest, which we'll talk about in a second, all things start to come into focus and you're going to have a lot more to give in the long run because of that. Guidance. Some of you may be seeking a better sort of mentor or guide or uh, what's an expert, whether this is a, an accountant, a lawyer, or uh, even a therapist, you may be finding someone who has better qualifications because someone in your life may have shown up uh, as just not having enough, lacking that. This is also a reminder for you to work on self-confidence because the best strength and guidance comes from within. So tune into that. And we talked about, you know, the rose uh, quartz that you can use for love and acceptance. You know, really focus on seeing that rose energy in your auric field and practice self acceptance, joy and um, and love, just really loving who you are, because that's going to help you when we look at wealth, pull in better opportunities. But just in your own life, it's going to help with health and well-being. All right, let's take a look, broadly speaking, at all of the energy here that the cards are showing. Uh, as I said before, just having the right balance in your life is going to be key here with the um, the six of pentacles. So if there's anything that's taking you out of your balance, now is the time to speak up. Um, as we look at the four of swords in reverse, your schedule is probably a little fast paced. Some of you may be burning the candle at both ends, and there's only so long that you can do that. Definitely take care of yourself. Solar plexus energy coming through with the um, sun card. So this is a great time to really work on strengthening your core. Birthing energy across the board as well with this. So um, sometimes it takes a lot of energy like this can be legitimately giving birth to a child for those of you that are pregnant. But this is also for those of us that are launching something or creating something. It's saying just like a new mother needs to recover, you may need to recover after doing something big. Don't go from project to project without a little bit of time or rest. OK, I know we're looking at uh, health, but a little bit of wealth and, and how you're managing your energy and, and, um, and free time is coming through here as well throat awakening here because we have the uh, king of swords reversed some of you just moved or just changed jobs or just changed relationships big changes with the blasted oak but it is in the deep past now it's about adjusting to, to change and making sure that the dust settles because you don't want to walk into a dust storm or into a storm in general um, take a moment or two and let everything get settled before you make the next big move or step in your life otherwise i quite like what i see here 
Um, I think for some of you, there's diminishing returns on a job here. We talked about the five of wands. I think this particular illustration is a little bit better. Um, you may just be feeling like you keep putting effort into something and, the, and it's not coming back. There's not a return. So if that's the case, take a step back, focus on something else and see where you can put your power and energy. Um, again, flexibility is key. Your emotions may be going up and down because this fish is all over the place. And I saw even the horse going all over the place. So creating some structure in your life could help, help you feel a little bit more um, stable. And um, I'm getting stable and able, the ability to kind of move to the next thing, okay? Uh, you might also be just in a, a mood to learn because this is a card of self-development, the King of Pentacles and strength and guidance. You might be kind of absorbing new ways to cope with things and maybe you're listening to a podcast or maybe connecting with, like I said, a new teacher, new therapist, someone that you can really lean on. And I like the overall energy here. All right, let's move on to wealth. We, we already kind of hit on this a little bit, but we have the Sun card reversed. An overdue moment in your life uh, to let something go, to raise your hand and go for something, to launch something. Now is the time. Imminent energy. Um, and again, if not now, then when? And I see just a little tiny person here sitting on this hill waiting for a sign. This is your sign. And we got two suns coming through here. This also could be love or partnership in a really high form that could help you accomplish one of your goals. But let's take it a card at a time. Um, so as we take a look at wealth, I usually like to break it down into a few categories. Let's look at those that are in a job, looking for a job, or either a student or retired. If you're currently in a job, there may be too many cooks in the kitchen. The, the management may be also quarreling or talking over each other. So this is a chance for you to try to step up and see if you can provide some clarity or some focus because this is about focus. What's our common goals? Where's the overlap? And you could possibly see some progress there. It's also about compromise. I think it's the fine art of compromise here that could really set you in the right direction. Rising above any of this sort of quarreling and really trying to set into motion something that's bigger, better and brighter and staying out of this sort of stormy energy that we have here in the crowning position. So, you know, try to be lead by example and also, you know, cut through some of the nonsense and just say that's not what we're here to talk about. Like really, when, whenever there's a meeting or, or some sort of discussion, there should be an agenda. And if people veer from it, you can say, this is valuable, but it's not appropriate for the meeting. So why don't we have you do a separate meeting? You can come back and report to us um, so that you can continue this. Or if you want to talk now, you guys can go in another room. We have to finish this portion. You have to basically find your boss energy and um, facilitate in a way maybe that you haven't before. Okay. Overall, it's actually pretty good. We're not seeing, I think that the, the biggest stuff has already happened. Some of you might just be deciding if you want to stay after a change of guard. There could be, and that's what this could be, someone new coming in, someone trying to, you know, establish order. It's going to take a little bit of time for people to trust that. And you, you can just sort of decide, is this what I want? If not, you have the flexibility to seek out something new and you have the ability to find it. Um, I think the key thing here again is to let some of the dust settle before making that decision. And that's the main thing that I'm picking up here. Um, some of you might just really feel inclined to go in a different direction. Like I said, there's no rider on this horse. So some of you are just feeling that sort of Mustang energy where it's like, I got to go this direction. I'm tired of this. And I'm just validating that. There could be two things going on at once, maybe two competing things. And you have to manage that. You have the capacity to do it with the Six of Pentacles. Six of Pentacles, when it comes to business, basically reminds you, you can have just about everything you want, but just not right now. You have to adjust something, whether it's how quickly you're doing it, how much money you're, you're spending for it. And if not, then you have to adjust the scope. So realistic expectations when it comes to expenditures and planning. That's really key too. All right. For those of you that are job seeking, um, yeah, we have two great cards here, two of wands, three of wands. It could happen quickly. You could have a couple of options on the plate. Um, I think one thing here is not to give up, to keep working hard. About the moment you're ready to give up, that's when the hidden sun energy came through. So keep on the same path that you're doing. I think some of you are um, possibly deciding to go into a new direction. This is a baby card. It's birthing. So it may take a little longer, especially if there's people that have more experience than you do. 
Um, if you don't see what you're wanting, I had a dream last night where someone was trying to talk another person into compromise. Don't, don't do that. Um, life is too short for, for that kind of, um, for, for giving up on a dream. Let's put it that way. Um, compromise in a, you know, sort of like when it comes to a negotiation, that's fine, but compromising your dreams, um, that's different. Don't give up just yet. Uh, about the moment that you're ready to, something comes through. Let me see what else is going on here. I think that, again, maybe some of you just got into a new situation. So newly unemployed, or for some of you, you might have just moved, maybe moved because of a partner or something like that. It takes a little bit of time to put feelers out and to get a feeling for what's going on. Um, look in a different direction. Something that you maybe normally wouldn't because this Three of Wands tells me that it's here, but it's packaged differently or it's arriving in a different shape or form. And so that openness can help you find something a little faster. Uh, you may need to relook at the, whatever the offers are that are coming through Six of Pentacles. Um, it does show something where it may not be as much as you're used to. And there may be in here something where you get the title but not the pay or the pay but not the title and you have to sort of balance out if that's good enough for you. But I do see an opportunity. It's just, it's a little, little different than you expected. And also, if you still think that that's not enough, it may take a little bit longer because the Four of Swords is also a period of stagnation or, um, or just basically quiet, but then we see something coming through. So be patient, okay? Um, and the way to find it is uh, through friendships. We, we talk about that a lot, but getting out there. And for some of you, really making sure that you are absolutely clear in how you're presenting yourself. So resume, website, and any sort of portfolio. It needs to be razor sharp. This one has opportunity to be a little bit sharper. This one as well. And you may not be choosing the right category if you're submitting something online. Think of yourself in a different role. There's something else that's missing there. Um, and when you kind of stumble on that, that'll be good because <laughs> it, it should be easier then. Don't sell yourself short of an opportunity just because you can't see it. If they see it, you're the right connection there. They might be looking for someone with a different skill set. If you are retired, it's a good time to be retired. Um, I feel like what we're seeing here with the two and three of wands could be, uh, and this birthing card, for many of you deciding to start something new just for you. We have all these fiercely independent cards. No sort of humans in many of these cards. So you could be launching something just because, doing something just because. Lots of hermiting energy coming forth as well. You could be taking people by surprise. Um, it's, it's a good time for... Also, uh, when we're looking at this, the sun essentially is a card of Genesis, birth, creation, and rebirth for many of you, especially since the Four of Swords can show death or passing or, um, and again, this is more figurative. So when you decide to let go of a path, you are closing that door, but another door is opening and it's bigger, better, and brighter than the one that you just came out of. So this is a rebirth and reinvention. See it as such and have some fun with it. Students, let's look at you real quick and then we'll go into love and relationships. So for students right now, um, I feel like you're actually on the right path. Two of wands, three of wands, things are happening pretty quickly. A lot of work, a lot of sort of energy going into school right now. Please make sure that you're not getting burned out. Get enough sleep. Um, overall, it's, you're on the right path if you, if you like where you're at. The six of pentacles just shows me um, to not overextend when it comes to extracurricular uh, and even just course load. Less is more. Do it, do it better. I it would be better to take an extra semester than to push to the point of exhaustion because you've got what it takes to make it to the finish line. Try to enjoy it as you're going through it. There's something right now that's not super clear for you with the Eight of Swords, so ask some questions. Maybe there is a chance for you to develop a major that is not on the books. This, I saw this in several universities that I went to. Um, well, I went to two undergrad and graduate, but um, I, I should say I saw it with several friends where they did like a double major or they worked with uh, one of the deans to specialize in something because they had a skill that wasn't recognized with one of the degrees. And they're like, yeah, we can kind of make a program. Why don't you do this, this and this? It'll still fall under this umbrella, but you can have a new special uh, specialization. So there could be a path that you could create for yourself. OK, and that's everything here. So let's move on to love and relationships. Um, so we have the medicine mother coming through here and she says, honor your inner knowing. And the main thing here is it's about healing. You have a chance to heal relationships. 
to heal or to release because we saw a little bit of both. So let's let's break it down uh, into the different types of relationships, focusing first on those in a relationship looking for love and then single and happy. If you're in a relationship, we have two strong people here. One who is outspoken, often speaks without thinking. Another who really shows a lot of support, care and nurturing, very paternal or maternal and a very sort of action based or speech based energy. So sometimes they clash because the person that provides and nurtures and holds space doesn't always get the same opportunity to speak up. So hold space for one another. Try to share the, the load a little bit better. That's really what the Six of Pentacles is all about. And then make some plans with each other, for each other. Two of Wands is a, is a planning and, a, and an envisioning card. The Three of Wands is also celebrating um, all that you've done and seeing where you might want to go next. So I love both of these. We can see a lot of work and a lot of um, routine with the Five of Wands in a relationship. But a relationship, never you never want it to feel too much like it's just work. So taking time to just have fun, to go see a movie, to treat yourself and whether you're ordering in or going out or just taking a walk together, whatever, change it up, change up the routine. This is showing that something needs to shift anyway. Um, the overall trajectory is good, but let's focus on this. Some of you may have had an unsettling moment or a big change that you couldn't control. Tower and Four of Swords, someone could have died. Um, you know, there could have been someone that transitioned into spirit. There could have been a loss of a job, could have been a broken bone, a change in health. Something where it's like, well, that was unexpected. Now it's just about dealing with the change. You can't control the change, but you can partner up and talk about it, support each other and try to face the storm together. That's the best thing here. I do like that the near future card is one of possibilities and the outcome is one of balance. So if you want to create balance and work together, you've got this. The only thing that we want to avoid is competing motives. And the other thing here would be a lack of communication. The Four of Swords is silent treatment. And honestly, in any relationship, when you kind of do that, it, it doesn't, it's not going to benefit the overall health of the relationship. By shutting someone down um, or by ignoring them outright, you allow them to jump to their own mental conclusions. And that typically just exacerbates any problems beneath the surface. And we also see that that's just, generally speaking, not very mature. Like I said, the son is a baby and it's someone who's doing a self-serving motive. I had a friend who kept having all these excuses. Every time I called, oh, I've got to go to this class. Oh, I'm on a meditation retreat. Oh, I'm um, disconnecting from, so like for two months. And there came a certain point where I'm like, it's too complicated. I'm, I'm, I'm done with this. It shouldn't take two months to get back to me or for me to connect with you. And I shouldn't have so many rules around engagement. So if it gets complicated or if the person's ignoring you, you take a hint at a certain point. And if it's in a long-term relationship, that's a hint that they're not invested. And that's why this final card would be you deciding, do I have to keep putting so much in if I'm not getting it back? Um, that's a very small use case, but just giving you a recent example with a long-term friendship. And these existing relationships can also be that because I said this can be platonic as well as romantic. So if you're just not getting any feedback or if the person's outright ignoring you, they just don't have what it takes to have the conversation saying, I think we need to, to move in a different direction. And that's okay. Not, not everyone has that. Some people are afraid of communication or confrontation and um, you just have to sort of like let it go. It's probably the best thing on that case. But for most relationships, we see the work, we see balance, we see the fine art of meeting in the middle, and that'll take you um, further than you might imagine. For those of you that are looking for love this month, there could be a Pisces coming in with this fish um, because a catalyst can be something really, really big. We also see someone here who is, um, you are just drawn to them. When this is new love, this is someone who lights up the room when they walk in. It's someone who you get butterflies in your stomach when you see them. Uh, it's someone who has a past life connection to you. And um, it has the capacity to go far. The problem right now for some of you are the challenge, not necessarily problem. There's just a lot going on in the environment with the five of wands. And you have a chance to sort of think, is this worth my time and energy? Can I put a little bit more into this new relationship? Can it happen? Yes. I think the biggest problem is like all of the options in front of you. King of Pentacles, uh, King of Swords, Knight of Pentacles. And then we have the Sun card here in the fish. So all of these represent potential partners. And when we see like three to five partnerships pop popping through the center of this spread, I would say there's a chance for clarity. 
you could just be a little clearer on what type of partner you're looking for. Um, possibly someone that is um, emotionally available, financially stable, ready to you know, fill in the blank, whether it's start a family or travel the world or whatever it is for you, and then say, I'm ready to receive this or greater, and I'm ready to receive it now. That also helps the universe know that you're serious about it and you could possibly get it sooner because we saw the three of wands. So why not give it a shot, right? The only warning that I have for those that are single and looking is some of you may be a little bit on the rebound. The blasted oak or the tower in the deep past can represent someone that has exited your life. There's still a little bit of healing to be done here. You're gonna come out of this just fine. Part of the reason that so many people might be showing up for people in that category is you just wanna make sure that you are very much taking your time, exploring all options. And in that case, I totally understand why so many people are showing up. Um, so try to enjoy the act of meeting new people. Take it one step at a time. I know that some of you are going into, you know, uh, new territory, uncharted territory, but ultimately it looks like it's going to be all right. Your schedule might be a little bit busy, so do make room for that. And otherwise, looks like you're in the right direction. Finally, for those that are um, single and happy, and this can be any state of life, any stage of life, I should say, um, it looks pretty good. Uh, the, th uh, the two of wands and the six of pentacles, you're creating space for new things. Much like when we were reading for retired people, it's a chance to reinvent and imagine new things. Where I do see a lot of the energy going is in personal development with the king of pentacles. Um, for some of you, maybe really making um, some renovations at home because this can be deciding to tear down a wall or do something like that. And this is a card of house and home. And so you're trying to make the space feel good for you. And um, the other thing here is with the two and three of wands, if you put your energy into manifestation, uh, you know, this is a chance where things could happen faster. And by the way, this is true of everyone going back into the horseshoe energy. If you can see it, you can do it. And these two cards really highlight that nicer than anything here. So seeing is um, not, yeah, believing is seeing rather than seeing is believing. So sometimes we are so focused on having to look at something in black and white, but when you can uh, feel it here, see it here, it pulls it into reality a lot faster, okay? All right, let's move on to destiny. We have memories of love. I love the outstretched hands, ready to receive. Um, it reminds me a lot of the Six of Cups. This card is um, in the reverse state, and it's basically saying, open yourself up to receive all the stuff that we were talking about. This boils down to loving, nurturing, and believing in yourself, really being the high priestess and, and the Six of Cups, which is a card saying, I'm ready also to meet up with people who have done the same work. So keep doing that, keep working on that. The memories of love also connects to this past life energy that some of you are calling in. So whether it's a new friendship, a new partner, or maybe just someone pivotal, this could be even a teacher that's gonna come in and awaken or change your trajectory. There's something here that's really profound, and, uh, and I think this is an exciting combination of cards as well. And the last thing here is remembering what it is in your life that brought that sense of love and joy and saying, you know what, I'm going to cultivate that again. I'm going to create room. Um, I'm not going to compromise when it comes to the things that I care about the most. Let's go a little deeper now into sun rising and moon sign messages and see what is coming forth. Sun, rising, and moon. Okay, so let's start off with sun sign. We have the green man, and in this deck, that is the emperor. That's great energy. That is the boss card. This is saying if there's something that you want to do, this is the time to get to it. I love that we see him at the cauldron of creation there, making something special. Um, it is a time of leadership, of independence. Again, that boss energy, it's a paternal card, so this is also developing and, and creating. And, um, and this is basically the universe saying, this is the time, this is the place, trust in yourself. And trust in the magic that is the emperor card here in the green man. A Little bit more creative energy here than you would normally see in an emperor card. Oftentimes the emperor is sitting back quite passively, um, kind of just letting things come to him. And in this one we see active creation, active movement, action being the key word here. That's a common theme because when I was talking about this earlier, this is going after what it is that you care about, the Knight of Pentacles. So um, combine that with the uh, 
the emperor energy and it's kind of like the sky is the limit for you so do keep me posted this is a great month across the board for any sort of major movements or developments and it's really a good time to take charge and that's the takeaway for sun sign in rising and ascendant we have the queen of cups in reverse this is a card of creativity and sensitivity many of you may be receiving a lot at once it could be a lot of emotional things that you're processing, new love or a challenge in a relationship, good news or not so good news. The main thing here that you wanna do is find a way to channel that into a creative and also a constructive channel. So this could be talking to someone, it could be writing things down, it could be artistic endeavors. It's also just saying breathe and take it one step at a time. Don't get into that place where you're thinking about all the potential outcomes, especially things that may not come to be. Just one step at a time. And say no, because you know we had a card here of discernment. This is saying, if something's too much or if you're not ready, just say that. Say, I'd, I'd love to explore this more, but right now isn't the right time. Can I come back to you when I'm prepared? So have, have the boundaries that you need to establish those, um, speak up if you need to, and really just take care of yourself at the end of the day. Um, know this, you are lovable, you are deserving of um, happiness and joy and love as well. Um, it's just a matter of acceptance and self-care above all else. Moon sign messages. We have the Ace of Cups in reverse. Very similar message coming forth with this, but there could be something right in front of you. Someone could say, I'm interested in a relationship. They could be offering you a job. There could be something that you want to do, but there is this feeling of doubt or uncertainty or, or being under or unprepared. And some of this could just be in your headspace. Go with the energetic flow. If something's coming your way and it seems like it's easy, don't. I just had a daily card read where I, I said, don't make it harder than it needs to be. Um, everything in the divine flow. So if it's come to you and you're ready, um, don't get in the way of that by, you know, having fear or anxiety set in. And I think that's the main takeaway for that as well. If something isn't good enough for you or you don't like it or there's no mutual spark, then it's okay to say no. Um, and that's true of the Queen of Cups in reverse. It needs to feel right for you. One of the things that I did see in dreams was someone trying to convince somebody in, uh, into sort of getting into a partnership or relationship that didn't feel right. And uh, this, this didn't make it into the slides, but I'm thinking about it as we're talking. So, you know, you, you deserve to be happy. And just because settling is really what it was, just because settling was good for someone else doesn't mean that it will be the right path for you. Listen to your heart on that, literally with all of these cups cards. Okay, now let's take a look at the final question. This is your chance to ask one thing that I have yet to answer. Um, just, it's an opportunity for everybody to make sure that they get all of their questions answered. So focus on that very specific question. And let's see what the universe has to bring forth. Yet another Cups card, also reversed. Um, so now we have the King of Cups coming through. Um, the King of Cups in reverse is saying, not yet, but soon. The reason it's a not yet is because there's something here that's saying, you're not ready or you're not accepting it. That's all you have to work on is um, acceptance or, prep, or preparation or simply releasing something. This is also saying it's okay to let something or someone go too. Um, so everything in divine flow. We got the fish way at the beginning and now we have all these water cards. It makes sense. Some of you may feel like a fish out of water. Um, Maybe that's because something that you've wanted so long, it's finally coming to fruition. That's okay. That's normal. That's just the universe kind of like saying, now or never, let's do this. Don't, don't get in your headspace too much. That's what I keep getting time and again. There could be big love coming forth this month. It could be a water sign. Um, not just a Pisces, maybe Cancer or Scorpio as well. But big love, big opportunity, possibly a lot of fun too. So let yourself go a little bit when it comes to that, uh, trying to control everything. And I think that could also be really beneficial. All right, my friends, that's everything for today. I do hope you enjoyed this. If you did, one way that you can do it that shows a lot of support is by liking, subscribing, sharing it as well, and leave a comment. Let me know what you're going through. Let me know what resonated. It, it means a lot to me and it lets me know where you're at. 
Give me a follow on social if you would like to get reminders. In addition to that bell icon, you can also join me on social media. It's always my full name on all major platforms, Nicholas Ashbaugh. You can go to my website if you want to get those official links. And uh, here's a clearer link to my website. And if you want to show support here, you don't have to leave YouTube. You can just become a member. You can give a super sticker, thanks or like, and all of these help um, support me and new projects, um, including my podcast. Uh, if you didn't che check out the first episode that I launched last month, it's still there on the podcast tab. Please do so. And thanks to everybody that did show support. I appreciate you guys. Just a quick reminder, I don't send direct messages, nor do I offer private readings. So if somebody does that block report, let me know about it. I'll make sure that I try to take care of it. Thank you for your time, for allowing me to be a part of this reading and, and really facilitate what's coming through for the month ahead. And just thanks for being the best part of what I do here on YouTube. I wouldn't be here without your love and support. And I'm very grateful. Take care and I'll see you soon.